Hey friends, welcome back to She's At It Again. My name's Tanya and I need to make a cheesecake because I am hosting a dinner in a few days. I want to get it made and put it in the refrigerator. It just seems like it gets better when it sits in the fridge for a while. So come with me as I show you how easy this is. And when I say easy, I mean, think of it compared to like a box cake mix, which I wouldn't really recommend, but this is actually to me easier than a box cake mix. I know it sounds crazy and it no it sounds like, oh, she's just saying that because she cooks all the time. But when I started making these, I kept thinking, there's got to be more to this because people act like they're something fancy. And they are fancy because they're really decadent and they're rich, but they're not hard to make. So come with me as I make a cheesecake. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our crust for our cheesecake. And in this just metal pan, I have it on top of the burner of my stove and I have it on super low. It's just on super low and I'm just melting the butter just where it's really really soft because we're going to use that butter to make a shortbread crust now that is five tablespoons of butter in there so unsalted butter and now we'll um, wait for that to get super soft and then we'll start our crust all right we have our butter pretty much softened and we just need to mix up the dough for our crust. So I want to show you the cheesecake pan. First of all, this is really cool. My sister got me for this several years ago. We're always finding really cool cooking stuff and seeing who can outdo the other one on getting it for each other. Okay, this is just a ceramic bottom for the pan. And this is a flexible silicone edge for it. And then you just wrap it around. There's a little slot at the bottom. You wrap it around and put this little peg into these holes there's a place to grasp it on the side you put it in there and it just fits together like a puzzle so how cool is that so we're going to be making up our crust now and i have my five tablespoons of softened butter in here pretty soft i'm going to put two tablespoons of sugar in that I'm going to put a half teaspoon of vanilla. Now, this is what was left out of my big jar of vanilla, my homemade vanilla. And you can see how dark it is in there. That's the seeds. That's not necessarily all the color of the vanilla, although it's, it's a darker color. But when they settle to the bottom, it's a lot darker at the bottom. There's a lot of vanilla bean seeds in there. You can see the residue on the lid. There's just millions of seeds. So about a half teaspoon of vanilla I'm going to put in there and then we're going to add a cup of unbleached flour I'm going to go ahead and turn my oven on 350 because that's what it's going to bake at the entire time we'll bake our crust then we'll let it cool off a little bit while we're making our filling for our cheesecake. And then we'll bake our cheesecake off. Let that cool just a little bit. Make the topping. And it's, it's super simple. I know it sounds complicated and it's actually not. So hopefully this video will prove to you that it's not complicated. Okay, we're going to add a cup of unbleached flour to that. level cup of unbleached flour. Now some of you might be saying, I just use graham cracker crust for a cheesecake. And that's fine if you like graham cracker crust, but I have a tendency to just think a cheesecake is just so smooth and just really creamy and decadent. Like I said before, that's a good word to use for that. Very rich and decadent that I just don't think a graham cracker crust matches it because graham flour is a whole wheat flour and it's kind of um, not lumpy, but grainy. I mean, it's whole grain. 
But this is what I call a shortbread crust. If you were to roll this out and bake it, it would be shortbread, like a shortbread cookie. So this is gonna be smooth, not too sweet, but buttery and rich, just like the filling is. So I think it just matches a little bit better, but that's just me. You can use what you want, but this is um, the perfect crust for this particular cheesecake. You're just gonna stir this up. It's not gonna be a wet dough at all. It's gonna be kind of like a dry cookie crumble dough. Hopefully you can see that well enough. Just try to get all the flour incorporated in it as best you can. And we're gonna pour it in there and just tamp it down into the bottom of our spring form pan. This is a 10 inch spring form pan and it fits really nicely in there, but if you have a 12 inch, it's also fine. I wouldn't go any smaller than a 10 inch only because the thicker it is, the less surface area you have and the more risk you run of it not being completely set in the center when you take it out of the oven at the uh, prescribed amount of time. Years ago, we were doing a fundraiser, and my part of the fundraiser was to make cheesecakes. This was right before Christmas, so great time to sell cheesecakes. And what I didn't realize was people really like cheesecakes. And so I made over 50 cheesecakes, not even kidding. So I thought I was out of my mind. Now keep in mind, I didn't run a bakery, I didn't run a store, I didn't run a business, but I was one busy chick making 50 cheesecakes, and this was in about a four week period. All right, let's take this and put it in our spring form pan. I just like using the back part of my hand there because I can feel where it's going. Sometimes it sticks to the spatula and it doesn't normally stick to my hand. This is not going to go up the sides of the cheesecake or of the spring form pan. This is just going to be strictly on the bottom. And I'll take my finger using this part right here, pushing it into the edge. That way none of the filling goes down in between the pan and the bottom part of the pan. The, the, I'm sorry, the edges and the bottom part of the pan. It's not really likely to do that just because it's such a, a, a thick mixture. It's not super runny, but I just don't want to take any chances. I don't want it to come out of the pan if I'm using a faulty pan, and this one certainly is not. This is probably the best spring form pan I've ever used just because it comes off so easily when you have a finished product. Okay, we'll wait for our oven to preheat and then we'll put that in there. We'll be right back. Okay, our timer just went off on our oven and we're gonna put our crust into the oven. And it looks just like this. So completely raw. We're only gonna bake this for about five minutes, so we're basically gonna par-bake it. Not bake it completely, but bake it enough to where it's set. Okay, set our timer for five minutes. This is the part I'm not crazy about. Um, not the sugar, but the cream cheese, just getting it out of the package. It's, that's probably the hardest part of the whole cake. Okay, we're gonna put a cup of sugar in our bowl. but I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna put the cream cheese in there first. This is the part I'm not crazy about. 
just getting it off the package. There's got to be a better way to package cream cheese. Somebody out there that's a lot smarter than me, can y'all figure that out? Maybe in a tube like toothpaste or something where I can get every speck of it out without getting it all over my counter. Even if they put it in a tub like yogurt, that would be great. But this just, I don't know who thought of this. Let's put it in some plastic that looks like foil and put it all the way to the edge so it'll be super messy when people get it out. Not a good idea. Okay, we're gonna use four eight ounce packages of cream cheese. And make sure these are softened a bit. I got these out earlier this morning because I knew I'd be making this cheesecake this morning. It's about 10 o'clock and I probably got these out at, oh, I don't know, close to seven. So they've been sitting out on my counter for about two and a half, three hours. I never had cheesecake till I was probably in my 20s, and it's because I made one for somebody's birthday. I just saw it in a cookbook and thought, hey, I remember people talking about how good cheesecake is. I think I'll try that. And I'd never even had it. When I was a kid, I thought cheesecake had, like, cheese in it, you know, like a slice of cheese that you put on a burger. So I had no idea what the appeal would be to that as a dessert. But growing up as a hillbilly kid, you just... Go with whatever you're told and make up your own stories in your imagination about what it could possibly be. <laughs> and that's, that's what I had come to the conclusion of. It was just a cake that had slices of cheese in it. I could not figure out why anybody would want that. But, hey, people seem to really like it. Now, if you have a stand mixer, these are a lot easier to use in your stand mixer, I'd say, but I just wanted you to see the inside of the bowl. So this is my favorite bowl for showing you what's going on inside the bowl. That's why we're using it. So I have a hand mixer here I'm going to use since we have the clear bowl out. Okay, our timer is about to go off. So we'll get our crust out of the oven, and set it aside. I think I could honestly grab the silicone edge and it wouldn't even be hot, but I'll use the oven mitts just in case. Okay, it still looks about the same, but again, it's, it's par baked. We'll keep our oven on 350. All right, now I'm gonna add my sugar. I've got this pretty much just kind of mixed away from the center. Put our cup of sugar in. We'll get this mixed up to where it's light and fluffy.
right, that's part of the ingredients. At this point, we're going to put in a quarter of a teaspoon of freshly grated lemon peel. And I say freshly grated because I grate the lemon peel and I put it in a little jar in my freezer. So this is straight from the freezer. And I buy organic lemons, so it's good quality lemon peel. The dried stuff that you buy just in a, like a spice jar, it's, it's fine to use, but I would say you're going to get more impact from that freshly grated lemon peel. And this is our vanilla again we're getting out, and we're going to use a teaspoon of vanilla this time. It's crazy. I don't know if you can see how many seeds are in that. If I do it like this, see the seeds in there? Isn't that crazy? Looks like there's ashes from the charcoal grill in there now. But they're going to be delicious. Okay, we'll mix this up a little bit, then we're going to add our eggs. That's our last ingredient. Set that aside for just a bit. We're going to break our eggs. Look at my pretty eggs. Aren't those cool? This is, this is one of the really pretty ones. My friend has chickens, and she knows exactly which chicken laid which egg. It's the funniest thing ever. Some of these have a little bit of something. I don't even know what that is in the egg. I just know it's not bad. It's just a part of the egg. But because it's a cheesecake and because it's so creamy and perfect on the inside, you don't really want a lot of what looks like debris. It's not, but you don't want anything uh, like a an off-color piece of something or something with a different texture to it in there. So we have six eggs that are going to go into this. And you may have to hawk your jewelry with the cost of eggs being what they are right now. But this is one of the few desserts that's actually worth those six eggs. Okay, we're going to try our best to pour these in there just one at a time. Now, the idea with a cheesecake is not to incorporate a lot of air in it. You just want to get it smooth. You want to get all the lumps from the cream cheese out, get the eggs incorporated in it, but it's not to get air incorporated in it. In fact, you want to steer as far away from getting air incorporated in it as you can because that will just cause bubbles and make your cheesecake crack. It'll still taste delicious, but it just won't be as visually appealing. So let's put our eggs in there.
I'm going to scrape down the sides of this just in case there's cream cheese stuck to the side. And I know there is because I can see it. We want to make sure all the lumps are out because we want it to be smooth. Now we pour it on our crust. I'm trying to make sure everything gets in the shot where you can see it. Because this is not for my benefit, it's for yours. <laughs> I can see it fine. that little piece of residue from that egg I want to get out of there. Put it right there. It wasn't a shell, it's just a, it's like a little, almost like a blue colored piece from one of the blue eggs, I think. That bowl's a little bit heavy, so it's not that easy to hold and pour at the same time. All right. This is going to go in the oven, and we're going to bake it for 40 minutes. And then, before it comes out of the oven, we're going to be making our topping to go on this. So we have our timer set for 40 minutes. All right, I'm gonna get some of this stuff cleaned up and then we'll be right back and we'll make our sour cream topping that's gonna to be baked on the top, so hang with us. We're gonna to make our topping for our cheesecake now. Now this will be the last part to be baked on this. This isn't a part you just put on the top and let it go. This is gonna be baked as well. So the first thing we want is sour cream. I would not recommend Really, I wouldn't recommend low-fat cottage cheese, or not cottage cheese, cream cheese. I would not recommend low fat, the low-fat cream cheese, but I would not recommend the low-fat sour cream either. Use the full fat in this. You just get all the benefits from the vitamin D going to the right places in your body. It's just, it's just a good thing. If you're worried about fat, you're probably not eating cheesecake anyway, but I would say if you're going to make one, go through the effort of buying good quality products and, yeah, the low-fat ones aren't as good quality, in my opinion. All right, we're gonna need eight ounces of sour cream. That's a full cup.
I'm covering up the top of it because it'll usually splash up and smack me right in the face. Normally on my glasses. That's not a fun thing. But I also tamp it on the countertop to get any air bubbles out. I don't want to get the wrong measurement. Okay, that's about eight ounces. We're going to need about four teaspoons of sugar, so I'm just going to get a heaping tablespoon. Since a tablespoon is three teaspoons and a little bit more than that, it would be about four teaspoons. So I'm using unbleached raw sugar. It's under the name Zulka in the big box supermarket. Easy to find. It's not bleached. It's made out of pure cane and not sugar beets. It's non-GMO, and I just think it's a better choice if you can find it. Okay, next thing we want is another teaspoon of vanilla. Just simply mix this up. You can see why I put it in a clear measuring cup because you're just going to measure your eight ounces and then that's all there is. You don't need a big bowl for it or a mixer or anything like that. Just make sure the sugar and the vanilla gets all mixed in there. You don't want a blob of sour cream with no sweetener in it and a bite of the cheesecake. With Easter coming up, this might be a fun dessert to try to make ahead of time or just wait till close to Easter and try to make it on Easter. Like I said, it's not hard. You can see it's not hard. This is not time consuming. This is not a lot of steps. This doesn't have a lot of equipment to be used for it. Um, borrow a springform pan if you don't have one. It's just a fun dessert. Okay, you can set this aside or put it in the refrigerator. I have about 20, uh, close to 23 minutes left for this. Uh, we're, you're going to need cinnamon as well. This is just my bulk cinnamon in a jar I put in my spice drawer. So I'm going to put this back in the fridge, and there'll be, we will be, <laughs> sorry, I cannot talk. We'll be right back to put our topping on it and then bake it in the last step. Okay, cheesecake has baked for 40 minutes and now we're going to put our topping on it. I'm just giving it just a minute to settle down. At this point, the mistake that a lot of us make is we bring it out of the oven. If this was a finished product, we bring it the, out of the oven and put it on a countertop to cool. And cheesecakes just can't handle that type of temperature difference being that rapid. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our topping on it. We're going to put it back in the oven and we're going to cook it for another 10 minutes. Then at that point, we're going to turn the oven off, let it sit for about five minutes in the oven. We're going to crack the door open just a little bit and let it come to room temperature very slowly because that's where cheesecakes can get persnickety. Again, a crack in your cheesecake is not going to affect the taste. I promise you, trust me, I've eaten enough of them to know they taste the same. All right. Again, this is our this is our sour cream, sugar, uh, vanilla mixture, and we're just going to slightly drop this on there in little blobs. Now it may sink in. I don't know. Sometimes it does weird stuff. It got a bubble in it right there in the oven, but that's okay. This topping, this uh, this third layer here kind of covers a multitude of sins in that if your cheesecake has a little crack in it, it kind of hides it. But 
it just adds so much flavor to it. It's just absolutely delightful. I've had people say, what is, can I have your recipe for the top part of this? I'm thinking, you don't think it goes with the whole cake? That's pretty funny. They just like that sour cream top to it. It is, and it is, it really is that good, but it goes beautifully with the whole cheesecake. Now, of course, you can choose to opt out of this top layer and just top it with fruit or something like that, like a lot of people do. It just makes it pretty when you put fruit on it. But you can also add fruit to this, even on top of this layer. But this layer of the sweet and sour cream and the really good vanilla, it just, ooh, it just makes it so yummy. This recipe actually came, I can't remember if I've revised it any at all, changed it up a little bit, but it came from a cookbook that I've had since, oh, probably almost 40 years ago when I was first married, I got a cookbook from a tea room in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And I just know it has a blue cover to it. It's called, I think it's called Victorian Sampler. And I pr I'm pretty sure it came out of that cookbook, but it was a cheesecake that they served in their restaurant. And it's called Good Company Cheesecake. So that's what I continue to call it, but I just call it, you know, that cheesecake that I make with the sour cream topping on it. Try to get it just as smooth as you can, but it's not imperative that it doesn't have any uneven spots on it. Again, won't affect the taste at all. Man, those vanilla seeds are so pretty in there. Whoever thought having a black specks in something would be something you'd shoot for, but these are gonna be delicious. Okay, here's where our cinnamon comes in. This is what we're gonna do. I just have a little quarter teaspoon measuring spoon here. And instead of just shaking it over it, I'm just gonna take my finger and gently tap it. And what we wanna do is just get it around the edges. I'm hoping that you can see this. Uh, I don't know how to get that any closer other than moving the camera. And I'll just mess it up. I'll pick it up and show it to you in just a second though. Don't want a super defined line, but just get it around the edge. Like that. All right. Let me see if I can get this closer a little bit so you can see what it looks like. All right, I'm gonna put this back in the oven. Good thing this thing has an edge on it, a lip on it that I can grab a hold of. All right, and put this back in there for another 10 minutes. So setting our timer for 10 minutes and I'll be back and let you uh, see how we just kind of cool it down a little bit at a time. Mm. Yum. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off, turn our oven off. And this is what it looks like. If you can see through my dirty oven glass. No, you really can't because the reflection. But we're gonna leave that in there for about five minutes and then we'll crack the door open. Be patient, little cheesecake. Okay, it's been five minutes now. And we're just gonna prop the door open just like that. There's the cheesecake. <laughs> So we're gonna let it stay like that until the oven completely cools down. So if you have something else to bake, do not make a cheesecake right now. <laughs>
you need to let the oven come down to the temperature where you can actually pull a rack out with your bare hand if you need to. So I'll be back and let you see the final product. Okay, we're gonna get our cheesecake out of the oven. Okay, this is what it looks like. The oven's cooled off enough where I could actually touch the rack and it wouldn't burn my hand, so that's when I knew I could get this out. Okay, we don't wanna run a knife around the edge like we'll do eventually for right now. I'm gonna let this completely cool down to room temperature. I'll put it in the refrigerator covered, and then when it's time to serve it, I will take a knife, run around the edge, even though this silicone edge probably would not stick to it. I just don't want to risk it peeling any of it off. So I'll just run a really sharp knife gently around the edge of it, take the sides off, and then hopefully I can remember to video this when I'm just about to serve it. Now you have to understand, I get real excited when my guests are about to show up and I think we're going to have maybe, I don't know, nine, eight or nine um, ladies come over that night. It's for our table talk group. It's a mentoring group that we have with a group at church. And, um, Last thing I think about is videoing something. And I don't want to get the camera out with people walking in because then they freak out and go, am I going to be on video? They're so scared. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully I'll give you another shot of this when it's all chilled. But isn't that pretty? It just makes the prettiest presentation. And trust me, this will be one of your favorite new cheesecakes if you try it. You'll think, the one with fruit on it? What did that even taste like? Because the fruit just kind of overwhelms that this is such a lovely flavor. Anyway. Thanks for joining us. I hope you give it a try. You can find the recipe down in the description of the video. And we look forward to sharing something with you again real soon. See ya. This is our cheesecake. And I just got it out of the refrigerator because I need to let it get a little closer to room temperature before we serve it. And that'll be about an hour and a half to two hours away. So I wanted you to see uh, taking the sides off of this. There's a little pin at the side. And of course, if you have a regular metal uh, cheesecake pan, it'll just have a latch on the side. Now this one, as you can see, the side comes off pretty easily. If you have a metal springform pan, you'll want to take a really sharp, thin bladed knife gently run around the edge of it to make sure the pan is not sticking to the cake and it will take any of the cake with the pan when you remove the edge. But this silicone edge on this one is pretty fabulous. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Hardly any cheesecake residue left on that. And this will be ready to slice when our guests are ready for dessert. And hopefully, I'll take a thumbnail of this and you can see it in slice form. But this is what our cheesecake looks like. And I do hope you try this because simple does not even begin to describe it. But delicious does describe it. It describes it well. Not many people don't like cheesecake, so you're probably going to be a big hero if you make one of these soon. Maybe for Easter, something like that, or a birthday. That would be a good idea. So... Thanks for watching, and as always, we appreciate it, and we look forward to sharing something again with you soon, and hopefully I'll remember to get a picture of this for the thumbnail. If not, you'll just see the whole picture of the cheesecake again, or the picture of the whole cheesecake again. So, bye guys. Mm -hmm.